church. Good morning. All right, now you heard me. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm usually not wearing this apparel when I preach. I'm sorry, but we will be baptizing today, and I will get wet. Uh, so you might have noticed, for those of you that come here uh, every Sunday, that we are pretty full today, uh, and it must be because there's some kind of event going on. Uh, well, today's event is, well, you see this uh, dark uh, tub of water, and we will be baptizing today. So I thought, I thought that it would be appropriate today to just teach a little bit on baptism. And honestly, since we will be baptizing today, and you must be pretty hot right now, so we're not going to take too long. But I, I want you to, uh, for those of you that are walking with the Lord and have been baptized, we're going to a, take a walk down memory lane a little bit. Why was it, why did you get baptized? What, what, what is that all about? Right? So we have a lot of questions, and maybe if somebody's asking, is going to ask you, well, what, what's baptism? And you might be a little confused. You're like, well, I, I forgot what baptism is, right? Or why are you being baptized? Huh, that's a good question, because uh, everyone is being baptized, right? So that's why I'm getting baptized. No, we want to know. We want to know, and then we want to tell you what, what's the reason behind baptisms, right? So first question and is why are we getting baptized? We're going to answer some questions today. Why are we getting baptized? Well, the simple, uh, simple answer is, and you can read it, uh, because Jesus commanded us to be baptized. That's a very simple answer, right? So why are you getting baptized? Why did you get baptized? Simply because Jesus said so. This is number one answer for this specific question, right? Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 says, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit. So what I'm noticing here is that it does not say go and make disciples, and when they are ready to follow, then you baptize them. Right? It doesn't quite say that because it says go and make disciples, go and preach the gospel, go have people hear the gospel, go get people saved, and once they get saved, you baptize them. In fact, this is a commandment. We are not taught about readiness before baptism. We are commanded to be baptized. Some of you maybe are sitting on the fence. Maybe you, have been, uh, you've, you came to Christ a long time ago, but you can't seem to make that decision about baptism. Listen, you were commanded. It's an act of obedience. How do you expect to grow if we are not being obedient? So it's an act of obedience. Baptism is an act of obedience. So when Peter preached his first message, the crowds were touched, and they said, what shall we do to be saved? It's, it's in Acts chapter 2, right? Peter preaches the very first message, and people were touched. And then what do we do? And Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive a gift of Holy Spirit. It is a commandment. Again, we notice that baptism is a commandment. It, has nothing, it says nothing about you being ready to follow Christ. It, has not, it says nothing about your being ready to be committed to Christ. It says once you are Christ's, you are to obey. It's an act of obedience. You can say that obedience to the commandment opens the door to the spiritual growth. Now, I don't want you to think that baptism saves I don't want you to think that it really changes you. However, baptism can help you in your spiritual growth. Why? Because baptism is an act of faith. Listen, you are being obedient to God's commandment by being baptized. You're not really sure what's happening. You're not really sure what's going to happen to you. But it is an act of faith. Yes, it is act of obedience because Jesus told us to be baptized, but it is also an act of faith because of what baptism actually stands for. Faith is action based on what we believe. And today, we're going to have three people being baptized 
And they're going to commit this action based on what they really believe. Baptism signifies something very important. And we are to proclaim what to believe, what we believe, with an act of baptism. After all, my friends, those of you who are following Christ, you are called to proclaim His goodness. You are called to proclaim your Lord and Savior. You can't be silent. And baptism is one, is one of those acts where with this specific act, you proclaim a specific belief. Romans chapter 6 Verses 4 through 6, it says, For we died and were buried, buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. And since we have been united with Him in His death, we will also be raised to life as He was. We know that our old sinful selves were, uh, uh, selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. And we are no longer slaves to sin. So I'm thinking about baptism. All right, What does baptism signify? So we just read uh, Paul talking about baptism a little bit and what it does. But what does it really signify? So here's a few things that you must remember. Baptism signifies that we believe that Christ died, was buried, and rose again. Baptism, by, by uh, committing baptism, baptism signifies that we believe that Christ died and was buried and he rose again. Do you believe that? Do you believe that Jesus died and, and was buried and rose again? Louder. Amen. Amen to that. That's right. This is why we go to church. <laughs> because we believe that. And you might say that with your words, but today as these young people are being baptized, they are proclaiming that Jesus Christ died, was buried, and he was raised again. And as we are being baptized, we are proclaiming Christ's victory on the cross. This is an act. This is an act of obedience. You are asked to do that. You are commanded to proclaim Christ's victory on the cross. We are announcing that, that victory to the people witnessing our baptism. And we are announcing that victory to the spiritual world. Another thing that baptism signifies is that baptism signifies that we believe that we will walk out of the grave as well. We believe that we will walk out of the grave as well. And we kind of do this thing where as we uh, baptize people and we submerge them into the water as if they died, right? And then we bring them back up as if they're alive, right? So Christ Jesus died, Christ Jesus was buried, and Christ Jesus walked out of the grave. We believe that. This is our future, and by being baptized, again, we, it signifies that we believe that one day we will walk out of the grave. Do you have your fellow believers, your uh, parents, your brothers, sisters in the Lord who died? Have you grieved them? Do you believe that you will see them again? I do believe that. I believe that I will see my grandpa and my grandma whom I've never seen before <laughs> or if I haven't seen for a long time. I believe I will see them because they will walk out of their grave and I will meet them again. I believe that I will see my uncle. I believe that I will see my, my brother-in-law. I believe that I will see them because they are in Christ and they will walk out of the grave. So when baptism is happening, we're saying that not only that Jesus did that, we're saying that we will do that as well. Death is not our final destination. We are proclaiming this truth that Christ is victorious over death. And because we are in Him, we will rise and death will not hold us. Also, baptism signifies that we have died to old self and we're new in Christ. This is a very important one. By being baptized today, you are telling everyone that old self is dead. Yeah, old Artem is dead. New Artem is alive, right? Old Alicia is dead. New Alicia is, uh, is alive. Old Arya is dead. New Arya is alive. New creation. This is what you're telling people. This is what we are telling the world that old nature is done with. Well, it's still going to linger, but a new nature is in you. A new nature. So this is a very important one. We are a new creation, not because of baptism, but because we were born again. And thanks to Christ's victory on the cross, 
and the gospel that was preached to us, we were born again. And finally, finally, baptism signifies that sin has lost its power over our lives, in our lives. Baptism signifies that sin has lost its power in our lives. Well, yes, you and I still sin. And so many of you are probably spending so much time on your knees begging God for forgiveness because you can't seem to get rid of this specific sin. And I understand. I understand. You see, the old nature is still lingering. And the reason why you're crying because you have a new nature. The reason why you keep running to Christ because the new nature does not let you live in, in sin. The new nature is not okay with sin. And new nature always brings you to the cross. So you always run to the feet of Jesus, begging him for forgiveness. God, I can't live like this anymore. New nature. So, yes, we still sin. But as we look at Romans chapter 6, you will find Paul arguing, arguing that we do not have to sin. You see? There is a difference. You, you sin. You will sin, but with your new nature, with who you are now, Paul is saying you don't have to sin. That's a difference. That means you may fall into sin, but you actually have a choice. You don't have to sin. And honestly, since specifically since I know this chapter and I know what Paul is arguing, very often I want to respond a certain way to my wife maybe or to my kids. And, and, and this thought process, you don't have to sin right now, Alex. And I'm like, oh, but I want to. I want to so much. You know, like I want to win this argument right now. But you don't have to sin, Alex. And I have to kind of like swallow it, right? Just kind of walk away. Oh, you don't have to watch this today. You don't have to listen to that. You don't have to respond to that. You don't have to. Why? Because your new nature's, nature allows you to do that. And Paul is arguing that in Romans chapter 6. We don't have to sin. Before, you had no choice. You had to do what your old master said. But now we are the children of God and we have a father whom we are called to live for. So as you are being baptized, you are stating sin has lost its power over me. Can we say that? Let's say this out loud. Sin has lost its power over me. One more time. Sin has lost its power over me. Do you believe that? I believe that. I'm no longer a slave to sin. I might fall, but I'm no longer a slave to sin. I can run from that old slave master anytime I, I want because of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I don't have to sin. Even though we continue to fall, praise be to God for ripping us out from the hands of sin and taking us for himself as children of God where we can live in the light of his holiness and be like him amen? amen well that was just a little reminder of what baptism is we could have went for another hour but i will spare you so uh you get to witness these three young wonderful people oh, proclaim their faith amen autumn you're first Get in there. You're gonna. You're probably wondering how I'm gonna fit him in this little tub. Uh, I have experience. <laughs> All right, Artem's testimony. Growing up, I went to church, but I was too young to take it seriously or understand anything about Christ. Soon after that, I just stopped caring over time, and I didn't know how serious a relationship with God really was. I would pray and try my best to talk to God, but I wouldn't grow my faith. I got influenced by a really bad group of friends, which took me down the wrong path, and I fell into more sin. I wouldn't always have this feeling like I'm doing something wrong, so I just stopped caring about it over time. None of my friends had a relationship with God, and I fell into a lot of bad habits. Life was at its lowest. But then something changed. I would start feeling guilty for what I was doing, and I would pray about it, 
but I would still keep doing it. I would try to get closer with God, but I just didn't know how to. I didn't know where to start or what I was doing. I didn't have anyone to look up to or even help me get closer to God, and for a long time, I would have this feeling of guilt that I would carry around with me, and I didn't know what to do. Over time, I met someone, and she slowly helped me get Christ back into my life, and so I became more aware of my sin. Then I got invited to a church camp and talked to so many people that struggled with problems and how they got back on their feet, and it really stood out to me, and I had an urge to get closer and learn more about God. When I came back, I started going to the way, and I started putting in more effort because I knew how serious it was. I found the right person that would help me with my understanding and just explain to me what everything meant. I felt the love of God, and I went on to repent. The joy and happiness that I felt was so unreal. I felt God's presence and a weight was lifted off of my shoulders. And now I decided to take that step and get baptized. I understand life will be even harder, and temptations will come, but I will put my all into it. I'm going to keep growing my faith and telling others about God and how it doesn't matter where you come from or how you grew up. God is always waiting for you with open arms. Amen. All right. Artem. Say this out loud, though, all right? Do you love Jesus? Yes. You heard him? Yes. Okay. Is, it, is Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? Yes. All right. Is it your desire to follow him for as long as you shall live? Yes, it is. Okay. Well, then I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Got it? <laughs> Before I knew Christ, I was always so lost and didn't know what I was doing with my life. I would pray and try to spread the word and talk about God to others. I would read the Bible and try to go to church, but I would constantly fall back into sin and felt guilty about it. I went to church and would talk to people that were so close with him, but somehow I never felt that. I had friends that would show me ways to be a follower of Christ, but I, never, but I knew I wasn't doing something right. Going back to school has made me fall back into temptation. Because of that, I would push God away because of the guilt I had. Sometimes I would get influenced so easily and would fall further away from God every time I would sin until I met a person that would help me with my Christian life. She understood me in many ways and showed me what real joy and happiness looked like with God. I could talk to her about anything and ask her so many questions, and still she never judged me. After that, I got invited to go to a teen's camp. I would see how believers were and uh, praising him. Seeing how happy everyone was influenced me to repent, and that was the first time I accepted Jesus into my life, and I knew what it meant to live a Christian life. When camp ended, I understood what life I was living and how difficult it was to live a Christian life, the decisions I had to make between the world and Christ. I tried so hard to build my, my faith with God and to grow it. I soon realized that I had to end my friendships and give up some of my old habits to improve my relation, relationship with God. <clears throat> then soon after that, my brothers both got baptized and their testimonies stood out to me and showed me that they had similar experiences with God. After that, I fought for God and tried my best to show my faith. I know that getting baptized won't make me perfect, but I know that I want to declare my life to Jesus and will try my best every day to make it happen. Church, isn't it like you're listening to their testimonies? Like, Can you feel that this is a child of God? Artem, can you feel that it's a child of God? Look at their testimonies. They're preaching to you. And so 
we thank you for doing that and uh, sharing this experience with us. And so uh, answer this very loud, all right? Just uh, like, because you're going to shout, is it, do you love Jesus? Yes, I do. Yeah. Is that how you shout? <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, all right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, um, is Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior and lover of your soul? Of course. Uh, yeah, of course. I like that. So, and I know you said this in your testimony, but let's just, let's just answer this question again. Is this your desire to follow him for the rest of your life? It is. Yeah. Okay, so then I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You did it. Arya Yermachenkov. My name is Arya Yermachenkov. I am 11 years old, and this is my testimony. Before I was saved, I constantly felt guilty about my sins, so guilty I cried myself to sleep. I was always confused why I did, and I found out one day in the car with my dad. He randomly asked me, who is Jesus to you? Our Savior, I simply replied. Then my dad asked if he was my Savior, and I knew why I would cry. I needed to be saved. A few weeks later, I was sitting in the back of church with my dad during worship and found myself crying. My dad asked me what was wrong. I answered with, I don't know. He told me it was God inviting me to become a child of God. I then accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Shortly after that, I repented. After being saved, I found myself talking about Christ at school and praising him whenever I'm outdoors. Not that I'm saved, I am not afraid to declare that I am a child of God. When Arya was born, she was no bigger than a paper plate, 14 inches, 2 pounds, and the doctor said that she will always be ahead. She will always try to pass, pass her peers. And my dad, her grandpa, asked, maybe it's too early for her. And she said, no. <laughs> Arya, it's my privilege to stand here with you and to baptize you. And you've grown so much. So Arya, tell me. Do you love Jesus? Yes. Yeah. Is Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior and the lover of your soul? Yes. Yeah? So, Arya, I know you're young, but this is a promise that you decide, decided to make. Is that your wish? To follow him? Yes. For the rest of your life, for as long as you live? Yes, it is. It is. Are you proclaiming your love for him right now? Yes. <laughs> I'm asking her more questions because she's my daughter. <laughs> well, Arya, it's my honor to baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. and pray in uh, a prayer of gratitude that God loves, God saves, and God continues to work in our lives, and he continues to, oh, he reaches out to the youngest and to the oldest. Father God, thank you so much for your love. Thank you for you, what you are doing in our lives. Thank you for saving. Thank you, thank you for reaching our children, our parents, our brothers and sisters, our grandmas and grandpas. Your love is overwhelming. Your grace is enough, God. And so here we are, your servants. We worship you. Thank you, God. Thank you for this opportunity where we see people's lives being changed, where we see you at work, Lord. I'm forever grateful. 
So, Lord, today with the church, we praise you, and we praise your great name for these three souls. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> We're going to continue with worship, and uh, this next song has the words um, that we sing a lot at baptisms. The words go, I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. And I was sitting here before church and uh, doing slides, and I was singing it, and Chris was filling, out the, filling up the tub, and he, he, he goes, do you know the story behind that song? I go, no, I actually don't. So he read it to me, and I actually want to invite him up and, uh, uh, and just read that story behind the song um, so we could all hear. By the way, what a powerful day. I remember my baptism in 85 before. Probably most of you were born. Um, but very powerful, very impactful. Um, if you've ever been driving along and you just think about stuff, and you're like, I don't remember the last mile I drove or the last three lights. And sometimes I sing songs, right? The songs I've known since childhood. And I, I don't really think about it. But when I found out the, the story behind this one, wow. And okay, I'm going to try and read it without getting emotional, but that's going to be a little bit of a struggle. Uh, and I'm going to try and uh, paraphrase it a bit. Um, so there was a revival in Wales like 150 years ago. And from that revival, a bunch of missionaries went to India. And these, a bunch of these brave souls went to an area where they were headhunters, very violent people. And they weren't getting anywhere but one man decided that he was going to follow Christ. And his wife and his two boys did too. The chief of the village found out about this and was infuriated and gathered the whole village together and that family. And he said, you deny that right now or I'm going to kill your two sons. And uh, then I'm going to read this a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> so that the man, the new convert to Christ, his answer was, I have decided to follow Jesus. <clears throat> he, they shot both their sons. And the chief, of course, is still very angry because the man is not, is not relenting. And uh, he said, okay, I'm going to kill your wife if you, if you don't turn away from this. And the man replied, Though no one joins me, still I will follow. <clears throat> the chief had his wife killed. And he finally said, the chief said, how about now? The man replied, the cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back. <clears throat> they killed that man. That may seem like the end of the story. But that chief was so moved by that, he decided to become follower of Christ the whole village converted to be followers of Christ. And amazingly, from that little action, important action that happened in that village, uh, this is actually a song that was sung before um, the altar call for decades at Billy Graham's uh, revivals. So millions of people have come to the altar with this. Um, but very powerful song. Chris? Yeah, church, would you stand with us? Let's sing out these words. is my reward and all of my devotion and now there's nothing in this world that could ever
God from age to age. God from age to age. Though the earth may pass away, your word remains the same. Your history can prove and there's nothing you can't do. church we're going to close this service with just one more song and uh we're kind of going full circle uh we're going back to singing about freedom and alex said this in his sermon we are no longer slaves when we are in christ and that's a great question that he asked do you believe it do you believe that you are no longer chained do you believe that the door to the cage is unlocked you could just walk out and live in freedom do you believe that you are no longer a slave? If you're not, we'd love to have a conversation with you. Come up to any of the leaders here. We'd love to come and pray for you. And if you are, if you do believe that you are no longer a slave, that you are free, can I just invite you to sing and celebrate that like you mean it today? Let's sing it out together. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. Sing it out if you believe it, because I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child. Cause I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. From my mother's womb, you have 
chosen me love has called my name I've been born again into your family your blood flows through my veins cause I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God cause I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child You split the sea. You split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears are drowned in perfect love. You rescued me and I will stand and sing. I am a child of God. Let's sing that again. You split the sea. You split the sea. So I could walk right through it. My fears are drowned in perfect love. You rescue me and I will stand and sing. I am a child of God. Yes, I am a child. Cause I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God and I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God Let's Sing that just one more time Cause I'm no longer a slave child of God, cause I'm no longer a slave to fear, I am a child of God. I hope that as you walk away from here today, you will keep repeating these words, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I'm no longer a slave to sin. I am a child of God. Amen to that? Amen. Amen. So listen, church, uh, church is over. Fellowship is not over. You can linger around here and just have a conversation. But you've noticed that we're passing around three uh, notebooks, and these are for our young uh, baptizos. <laughs> So, and what I'm asking you to do is not to take it home, all right, not just to hold it, but write something in it, all right? So these, when they are in church and they're taking notes, you know, they're encouraged by your comments, all right? So if you see one, just sign one. The names are on there, so. But with that being said, thank you for coming. Thank you for uh, worshiping with us and celebrating this amazing day. Amen. Uh, I'm proud of you guys. Proud of you guys. So uh, there will be a notebook for you with bunch of with bunch of signatures.